Kentucky. Alex. All right. Thank you so much, Jan. Well, more than 100 people are dead after a massive flooding in Nepal and northern India. It's monsoon season there, and the rain triggered a massive landslide this week. Debris blocked a river, which caused it to flood nearby villages. And families are abandoning their homes, and, of course, they need help. Well, joining us now via Skype is Thomas Tai with Direct Relief, a nonprofit that does charity work in the U.S. and around the world. And thanks so much, Thomas, for joining us here. Can you tell us what, you, uh, what families are doing and dealing with uh, right now? Well, I think, as you said, the, the reports are, um, you know, very ominous. I think a lot of folks were trapped, cut off, and I think we're still in the search and rescue and evacuation phase. We've been trying to get in touch with the direct relief partners in Nepal that we've worked with for several years, and that's been difficult just because of the communications challenges. But we're anticipating that these, uh, the patterns that we typically see in flooding situations, the concerns about cholera, concerns about waterborne illness, um, things like the fungal infection, people are sloshing around in the mud. We see those things typically, so that's what we're trying to anticipate and get ready for once the logistics and communications channels open up. Now, you mentioned uh, communications being a big uh, challenge. What would you say would be the biggest challenge right now to getting help to folks? Well, I think, you know, the information is always spotty in these situations. Uh, but what we do know is that these, the affected places are cut off by some of the access roads, leaving the uh, emergency services really by helicopter primarily. We have a group of staff in India right now, which has also been affected by flooding. And the Indian government has extended some offers of assistance to Nepal. So we're trying to see if we can plug in from Australia, where we have staff, from India, and also here from the U.S. We're just trying to vector in and see where we can best help and what information is available. You don't want to try to jam anything through a narrow pipeline in these, um, in these situations. So we have to make sure that uh, you know, we're hitting a very specific target. Absolutely, indeed. Now, you mentioned cholera briefly. Have you heard anything from health officials about that fear and concern? Well, we, I think it was the concern that was announced by the ministry in Nepal that among the things they were concerned about uh, was cholera, which can go through if there's a typically a densely packed kind of um, situation where there are evacuees and there's poor water and sanitation. It's a kind of a fecal-borne illness. So I think among all the other challenges, getting food, water, medicine, but also getting the water and sanitation prepared for the people who are displaced and have, been, have to be brought somewhere. So they're concerned about that, but there hasn't been any reports uh, that I've seen about an actual outbreak yet. And quickly, can you just tell folks, I know folks are watching, how they can actually help out? I think directrelief.org, our website, we try to keep our information current. And you know we're a support organization to locally run uh, organizations in Nepal and all around the world. So we have a pretty good source of information, not only about what Direct Relief is doing, but uh, also what the partners that we're supporting in these countries are doing. Uh, we try to do a good job keeping that up to date so it's, uh, people can plug in and get different sources of information, as we do, from people who are on the ground. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thomas Ty with Direct Relief, really doing a great job there, trying to help out the folks there in Nepal. Sad situation there, landslide, flooding situation. And, of course, you can help out, as I mentioned, by heading to directrelief.org.